Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> How's the weather going mm, there? It's raining and it, it won't stop, I think. But it's raining kind of light right now. But it's not complicated. To, I think it's good. Okay. So we are going to um, begin session number two of this week number three, uh, because we need to uh, use all the time that we have for this session. Um, I'm going to make a little review of the topic that we were learning in yesterday. It was a uh, really, really like kind of easy uh, topic that we were uh, seeing yesterday because it was the like and dislike topic. Uh, and that was just like to create a um, conversation with other people. So that's the, um, the use that we are going to give for that a topic. It is not like very complicated to create conversation with that information. So let's see, just read the information that we have for the topic that we were seeing yesterday. And it's this one, likes and dislikes. And I was um, telling you that we have some expressions that we can use to express the, uh, the things that we like and the thing that we don't like. Because it is not um, that we just have one phrase that we can use to uh, talk about the things. In this case, we have a lot of words that we can use to um, talk about the things that we like and the things that we don't like. So in this case, we have these tables in which you have some expressions you can use when you are talking about the things you like. The first table is the positive things, or in this case, the things that we like. And the other table is the one with the information that we can use or the phrases that we can use when we are talking about the things that we don't like. But in that case, you can find all that information on the document because um, we have the Spanish meaning for that um, phrases. And I was saying that maybe some of these phrases um, have different meanings depending on the context in which we are using the phrase. But in this case, this is the interpretation that we can give to this expression in this case or in this topic. Then we have the question, what do you like? Um, the answer that we can give, the, the percentage of the, the things that we like and don't like. Also, we have this um, a table in which we have the categories or things that we can use to ask questions about the things that we like and things we don't like. Um, and have different categories like love, like, kind of like, don't like, hate. And we have the last one that it is not in the table. That is, um, I think I, I didn't try it before, I guess. So we have different kind of answer that we can give to this information. Then we have some examples. Now, um, we were talking about question with do and does. That is not a complicated um, topic because in that case, we are just using the structure to create close question and open question with do and does. That in that case, we are using do and does for close question and then using the WH words, we can create open a question. So for that information, it's just necessary that we um, just understand the usage of the uh, subject. So that is not really complicated to understand. So now we are for this one, topic one and two. But in the first topic, we're, we're just going to listen uh, 
TV show where they have, in this case, you have to pay attention to the, the details about the contestants. Uh, we are going to listen this audio in which you are going to find some information. And in this case, again, this information will uh, help you to complete the work in the platform. So I'm going to change the uh, this one because I need to go to the the platform because we are going to listen the information and if you have um, not worked in this exercise, you will have the information right now in the answer because we are going to listen that information and you will see in the, the questions. Let me, give me a second because it is, Okay. I'm going to start this one. And we have here. So we are in number, section number four. So it's necessary that you have work in section number one, two, and three, because we are almost done with this course. Mm -hmm. This one, okay. We are going to listen and then we are going to talk about the exercises that we have in the platform. We have this one and I need to share the sound. Because I don't know if it is working. Yes, it is. So we are going to listen the audio twice and then we are going to read the questions. Listen to four people on a TV game show. Three men want to invite Linda on a date. What kinds of things do they like? What kinds of things does Linda like? Welcome to Who's My Date? Today, Linda is going to meet Bill, John, and Tony. So, let's start with the first question. On music. Bill, what kind of music do you like? Oh, classical music. Classical, okay. And how about you, John? Well, I like jazz. And you, Tony? My favorite music is rock. How about you, Linda? Well, I like pop music. I don't like jazz or classical music very much. Okay, now let's talk about movies. Bill, what kind of movies do you like? I like thrillers. And how about you, John? Oh, I like westerns. Westerns are good. And how about you, Tony? I love horror films. And what about you, Linda? I really like horror films, too. <laughs> and now for question number three. Bill, what kind of TV programs do you like? Well, I like to watch news programs. John? Uh, well, you know, I really like talk shows. And Tony, how about you? I like game shows a lot. And Linda, what do you like? Well, I like talk shows and game shows. <laughs> okay, time is up. Now, who's the best date for Linda? So one more time, and then we are going to read the question. Listen to four people on a TV game show. Three men want to invite Linda on a date. What kinds of things do they like? What kinds of things does Linda like? Welcome to Who's My Date? 
Today, Linda is going to meet Bill, John, and Tony. So, let's start with the first question on music. Bill, what kind of music do you like? Oh, classical music. Classical, okay. And how about you, John? Well, I like jazz. And you, Tony? My favorite music is rock. How about you, Linda? Well, I like pop music. I don't like jazz or classical music very much. Okay, now let's talk about movies. Bill, what kind of movies do you like? I like thrillers. And how about you, John? Oh, I like westerns. Westerns are good. And how about you, Tony? I love horror films. And what about you, Linda? I really like horror films, too. <laughs> and now for question number three. Bill, what kind of TV programs do you like? Well, I like to watch news programs. John? Uh, well, you know, I really like talk shows. And Tony, how about you? I like game shows a lot. And Linda, what do you like? Well, I like talk shows and game shows. Okay, time is up. Now, who's the best date for Linda? In this, um, this audio, we are trying to identify who is the best option for Linda. So in that case, we are having like these questions. So for the first one, what kind of music does Bill like? We have classical, jazz, rock, and pop. What is the best option for Bill? Classical. Classical, that's good. What kind of movies uh, does Bill like? We have thrillers, westerns, horror films, and comedies. Horror films. Thrillers. Thrillers, good, thrillers. Then, what kind of TV programs does Bill like? And we have news programs, talk shows, game shows, and talk shows and game shows. News program. News programs. Good. What kind of music does John like? Classical, rock, jazz, or pop? Jazz. Jazz. Rock. Jazz. Number five, what kind of movies does John like? Thrillers, comedies, horror films, or westerns? Westerns. Western. Good. What kind of TV programs does John like? News programs, talk shows, game shows, talk, talk shows, and game shows. Talk shows. Good, talk shows. What kind of music does Tony like? Rock, jazz, classical, or pop? Rock. Rock, good. What kind of movies does Tony like? Thrillers, westerns, horror films, or comedies? Horror films. Good, horror films. Number nine, what kind of TV programs does Tony like? News programs, talk shows, shows and game shows, or game shows? No, game, game, shows. Shows. game shows, good. Number 10. What kind of music does Linda like? Classical, jazz, rock, or pop? Pop. Pop, good. What kind of movies does Linda like? Thrillers, westerns, horror films, or comedies? Horror films. Good, horror films. And the last one. What kind of TV programs does Linda like? News programs, talk shows, game shows, or talk shows and game shows? Talk shows. Mm. There are both. There are two, I mean. The game shows. Uh-huh, talk shows and game 
shows. Good. Game show. Mm -hmm. So, for the ones that um, are not work in this uh, activity, you have just the answers. Right now, for that uh, exercise. So, it is not complicated because the audio is pretty understandable when you are listening the information that they are giving. So in that case, that conversation is a, like the topic that we were developing yesterday because they were talking about the things that they like and the things that maybe they don't like. But in that case, it's just to know people, to talk about with people and to make it kind of fun or interesting when we are talking. Tell me, Edwin. I'm having a bad internet reception. Sometimes I can hear you well, but I'm gonna be here for any case. I'm oh. just telling you. Don't worry. If you are not having a good connection, it's okay. We all have that kind of problems. Sometimes I had the problems too. Don't worry, if you don't have the good connection to the internet, it is not like you have to be in the whole session. You can stay when your uh, internet connection is okay. So now we are okay. going, we are going with uh, the topic number two, that is wool. We are going to talk about wool. So, we are going to listen a conversation in which we are uh, going to um, know the uses of wool. In this case, it's just an example uh, for the uses of wool for invitation and uh, is used when making plans. But in that case, we are going to use the conversation. Then I'm going to explain to you the different uses of wool and the structures that we are going to use to create sentences with that word. So we are going to move again to the, um, let me see, we are going to the platform in which we are going to listen the conversation in which we are going to um, find the uses of wool. So let me, yeah, there's one for invitations. Then we have the conversation that is called an invitation. In this lesson, participants would listen to a conversation where wood for invitations is used when making plans. We will learn through this conversation how to accept or refuse an invitation. As you listen to the audio program, pay attention to expressions such as I'd like to and I'd love to. An invitation. I have tickets to the soccer match on Friday night. Would you like to go? Thanks. I'd love to. What time does it start? At 8 o'clock. That sounds great. So, do you want to have dinner at 6? Uh, I'd like to, but I have to work late. Oh, that's okay. Let's just meet at the stadium before the match, around 7.30. Okay, let's meet at the gate. That sounds fine. See you there. like to, but I... So, in this case, we are uh, listening to this conversation that is called an invitation, in which we can see that we have two people talking about a specific event. And in this case, uh, we have the question, um, would you like to go? So that kind of question, we can make it when we are making plans to go somewhere with someone. So in that case, it's for planning something. So now we are going to learn uh, the different uses of wool. So we are going to see, uh, that general information, and then we are going to have some questions that we can make for uh, the uses of wool. But let me take this out. Let's see, it's kind of this one. Okay. Uh -huh. That's okay. So we are going to see 
the uses of wool. So it says that wool, uh, here, wool is an auxiliary verb. And it says that a model auxiliary verb that we use for, and we are going to have a short list of things in which we are going to use this uh, auxiliary. Um, los auxiliares son aquellos que nos ayudan, ¿verdad? A mejorar las expresiones, ¿verdad? Que son eso, auxiliares, que nos van a ayudar a completar nuestras oraciones. Así que vamos a ver para qué utilizamos este auxiliar en específico. So, we use wool mainly, in this case, um, it says mainly because we can have a lot of uses for this expression, but in this case, we are going to use the most important ones. So we have, let's see, number one, talk about the past. Also, we have it to talk about the future in the past. Then we have express the conditional mood. And we have, we also use wool for the other function such as, we have another function that we're going to use with this expression. And we have this one that is expressing desire. Polite request. And questions. Also for opinion or hope. Wish and regret. So we have a uh, like four four uses for uh, for this uh, auxiliary. We have to talk about the past, to talk about the future in the past, to express the conditional mood, and also for expressing desire, for polite requests and questions, um, also for opinion or hope and wish and regret. So we are going to see what is the structure of wool. The basic structure for wool is, and we have the this structure. We have the subject plus auxiliary verb wool, Not the neighbor. So in this case, the auxiliary verb will is in, um, we are not going to change the form. In este caso, podemos decir que el auxiliar es invariable porque se va a utilizar con todos los eh, sujetos. Eh, con todos los pronombres y no le vamos a cambiar la estructura cuando lleguemos a la tercera persona. Will es para todos los pronombres que nosotros tenemos en inglés. And also the main verb is usually in the base form. So in this case, we have the auxiliary that is making the function that um, we need for that specific sentence. So in that case, we are not going to use or we are going to change the time of the verb. So in that case, we are going to use the verb in their uh, base form. So we are going to see the 
a positive and negative in question form for this expression or for this auxiliary. So we have, a, we are going to write the, um, the structure and then we are going to have some examples. So for this one, we have for the positive, we have this structure that is the subject plus wool plus the main verb. And in this case, base form. And we have the example. I wool like tea. Now we have the negative. That is the subject plus wool plus not plus member. And we have the example she would not go. And we have the last one that is the question. And we have first wool, last subject, last verb, last complement, or in this case, the question mark. And we have the example. Will you help? So in that case, uh, we have also that um, the main verb is sometimes in the form and we have two different points that we can use for wool. In this case, we have the uh, have plus past participle and the B plus ing. So in that case, we can also use the auxiliary wool. So in that case, we have uh, these two in which we are going to use also the wool that is the half plus past participle in which we have this kind of examples he will have gone and then we have the other one that is b plus ing and we have these examples he will be gone So we have like many uh, structures in which we can use the auxiliary wool. So in this case, the main verb cannot be uh, the two infinity form because in that case, it will be not correct because in that case, we just need the verb in base form, but not an infinity. And also it says that a wool and hat have the same short form D. So in that case, we need to focus on the context of the sentence. That is this example. Let's see this one. And it says that a wool, know that wool and a hat has the same short form. That is this one. Right. This one. And we have some examples to know that. And the first one said, hit finish. And the second one, hit like coffee. So it's, it has the same short form. So in that case, we need to be very focused on the context of the sentences. Um, in este caso, cuando hacemos las contracciones, o sea, acortamos ¿verdad? las palabras, eh, en muchos de los casos, los finales que tienen eh, muchos auxiliares o muchas estructuras eh, se pueden parecer mucho. Eh, en ese caso, tenemos que estar bien concentrados en la oración y en el contexto que nos están brindando eh, con la información. 
para no equivocarnos, ¿verdad? De estructura. So, what are the uses for wool? Uses of wool. We have the first one, and it says wool for the past. Because in uh, the beginning, we were saying that we are going to use wool to, for talking about the past. So in this case, it says we often use wool as a kind of past tense of wheel or going to. Then we have two examples. We have number one, even as a boy, he knew that he will succeed in life. Then number two, I thought it would rain, so I brought my umbrella. So we have a wool for the past. In that case, it is like we are using the structure for um, making like a past tense of will and going to. So we have the examples and it says, even as a boy, he knew that he will success in life. Incluso desde pequeño, él sabía que iba a eh, ser exitoso, verdad, en la vida. Um, pensé que iba a llover, así que traje mi sombrilla. So, we are uh, changing uh, that uh, for a past tense. And then we are going to say, using wool as a kind of past tense of we are going to is common in reporter speech. So, um, when we are talking about reporter speech, we are talking about uh, the ideas that someone is talking about on a specific topic and I give a, another information related to the things that the first person is saying, but in short form. Um, for example, uh, when someone has uh, tell me something, I need to say that that person is telling me something. In este caso, cuando estamos hablando de reported speech, es cuando damos como la información primera persona estuvo dando y nosotros se la pasamos a otra persona. En el caso de uh, ella estaba hablando sobre sombrillas, por ejemplo. Y nosotros le decimos, ah, es que ella estaba hablando sobre las sombrillas. Esa acción que nosotros hacemos o esa eh, oración que nosotros formamos, o sea, que acortamos todo lo que la otra persona dijo, y lo pasamos a una tercera persona, es un reported speech. So, we say that we are going to use wool also for that kind of reported speech. It's common in reporter a speech. And we have the examples. Number one, she said that she will buy some eggs. And we have the a sentence that is the one that we are reporting. And it says, I will buy some eggs. In that case, we are changing some information about the 
um, the first sentence that we have. And then we have the number two. The candidates say that he wouldn't increase taxes. And we have the first expression. I want increase taxes. And we have another one that is number three and it says, mm -hmm. why didn't you bring your umbrella? Why didn't? You need to bring, you bring your umbrella. I told you it will rain. And we have the sentence that it says, it's going to rain. So in this case, we have the sentences um, eh, that we are going to report. So tenemos las oraciones dentro de los paréntesis donde tenemos la oración que tal vez se ha dicho, ¿verdad? Y la otra es la que nosotros ya entregamos después. En la primera tenemos, I will buy some eggs. Eh, alguien dijo, voy a comprar o compraré algunos huevos. But in that case, I said, she said she will buy some eggs because maybe someone is asking me for that person and I am going to say what is the action that that person is going to uh, perform. Entonces, yo cuando hago este tipo de acciones, yo voy a decir, ella dijo que iba a comprar algunos huevos. Entonces, hacer eso, ¿verdad? A la hora de hablar es cuando hacemos los reported speech. En el otro, I won't increase taxes. No voy a incrementar los taxes o los um, impuestos. En, uh, cuando nosotros damos a entender esa misma oración, decimos, el candidato dijo que. So, that action to say. Um, esa acción que hacemos o esa manera en la que expresamos las ideas. Ella dijo que. Él expresó que. Ella dijo o eh, yo escuché que dijeron. Um, es cuando nosotros entregamos esa información en un reported speech. And in la, in la última, it's going to rain. Maybe I say that. And in the reported speech, I bring that information into the conversation and I said, I told you it will rain. So in that case, I am reporting my own message. I am retelling my own message. And also it says that we often use will not to talk about past refusals. Past refusals. And we have the examples. He wanted a divorce, but his wife would not agree. Para uh, cosas que se han sido rechazadas, ¿verdad? En este caso tenemos el ejemplo uno. He wanted a divorce, but his wife would not agree. In this case, it's not. So, él quería o él, sí, él quería el divorcio, pero su esposa no estaba de acuerdo, o no iba a estar de acuerdo, o no estuvo de acuerdo. So, we have the second one. Yesterday morning, the car wouldn't start. Oh, 
Also, we often use, or we sometimes use, we sometimes use would rather than like used to. When talking about um, habitual past behavior, So in this case is when we are talking about something that we did like um, a lot of times in the past. In este caso, estamos utilizando el will para hablar acerca de eh, comportamientos habituales que tuvimos en el pasado. And we have the examples. Every weekday, my father will come home from work at 6 p.m and watch TV. My father will come TV. The next one, every summer, we'd go to the seaside. So in this case, we are using wool, that is the short form. And in this case, it is not like we are going to make some mistakes because we know that we are talking about that specific topic of that a specific auxiliary. Then it says sometimes she should phone me in the middle of the night. And the last one it says we will always argue. We could never agree. Okay. So what is the second use for the wool? We have wool for the future in past. So it's kind of confusing because we are talking about future in past. Now we are going to see why are we uh, saying something like that? Because it's kind of hard to understand why we're uh, talking about future when we are in a past time. So when talking about the past, we can use will to express something that has not happened at the time we are talking about. So in that case, it is not like we are seeing the future. In that case, it's talking about something that is not happening in that moment that is in the past. Express something that has not happened at that time. We are talking about and we have the examples. We have number one in London, she met the man that she will one day marry.
in that moment is not happening because they are not going married, but uh, they have met each other in that place. And the second one, it says, he left five minutes late on the word that the delay will save his life. Right. And the last one of the uses, that is the number three, that is will for conditionals. And we have, we often use will to express the so-called second conditional. So in this case, we have the conditionals that is uh, a kind of complicated topic in which we need a lot of information for zero conditional, first conditional, uh, second and third conditional. But that is like another information that we need to know about uh, this kind of uh, structures. And they are kind of hard um at the beginning because we can uh, find it really complicated to understand the kind of condition is an example of uses of so you call the second conditional as like explaining a lot of, of things about that kind of topic so in this case it is just an example so in that case we have the first one the first example that we have is if he does his job he will have no money In that case, it's like the cause and effect of something. And we have the second uh, example that it says, I want the love. And this is talking about something that uh, can happen, but it is not like. A uh, chain that is something unreal. Si hubiera ganado la lotería, me hubiera comprado un carro. So in that case, it is not possible because we have not won the lottery. So in that case, we cannot buy the car. So using uh, the same structure for the conditional, um, we are going to give advice. We are going to use the same structure for that sentences to give advice. In this case, it's dar como consejos. So we have the first one, and it says, "I wouldn't eat that if I were you." Yo no me comería eso si fuera tú. That is the advice. If I were in your place, I'd refuse. Si estuviera en tu lugar, lo rechazaría. And the last one, if you ask me, I will say you should go.
si me hubieras preguntado, hubiera dicho que deberías haber ido, ¿verdad? So in that case, we are giving advices using the structure for the second and third conditional. So in that case, it's just for giving advices. Sometimes the condition is understood and there does not have to be an if clause. Someone who like John will probably love John's father. If someone like John, they will probably love John's father. That is not necessary in some cases to add the if to the sentences because we have all the information in that phrase. Another one, you will never know it. For example, if you meet him, you will never know that he was rich. And the last one, why don't you invite Mary? I'm sure she uh, will come. Also, there is always a neighbor. Sometimes it is understood and not as stated as in. I would like to stay. I wish you would. What? Stay. Do you think he will come? I'm sure. I'm sure he will. Will what? Will come. Who will help us? John will. En estos casos no necesitamos volver a poner el, el verbo. El, por ejemplo, en la número uno. I would like to stay. Me gustaría quedarme. Stay is the verb. And like we can say that it is an answer. Es como una, es como una respuesta. Dice I wish you would. Me gustaría que lo hiciera. Podemos decirlo de esa manera. Pero hacer que quedarse. So in that case it's not necessary to use the, um, the verb again. The second one. Do you think he will come? ¿Crees que vendrá? I'm sure he will. Estoy seguro que lo hará. ¿El qué? Venir. Uh, who will help us? ¿Quién nos ayudará? ¿Quién nos va a ayudar? John will. John lo hará. ¿El qué? Ayudarnos. So in that case, it is not necessary to add the verb again. Because we know that we are talking about that, that action. So. We have wool for desire or inclination. And we're almost done. So in this case, we are talking about deseo. Estamos hablando de usar el wool para el deseo o las inclinaciones. And we have the first one, I wool love to live here. Amaría vivir aquí. Me encantaría vivir aquí. Would you like some coffee? ¿Te gustaría un poco de café? And then what I would really like is some tea. Lo que en realidad me gustaría es un poco de té. Then we have wool for polite requests and questions. Eh, cuando hacemos preguntas o pedimos algo para sonar más amables, vamos a utilizar el wool para no sonar tan fuertes, tan como que no somos muy respetuosos. Vamos a utilizar el wool para hacer eh, o para sonar más eh, respetuoso, ¿verdad? Más amables. Wool for polite. Requests and questions. And we have here, it says, would you open the door, please? Instead of said, open the door, please. That is like we are uh, just commanding. So in this case, the first one, would you open the door, please? Sounds more polite than open the door, please. The second one says, would you go with me?
It sounds more polite than, will you go with me? Third one, would you know the answer? It is more polite than, do you know the answer? And I forgot this one. And the last one, what would the capital of Nigeria be? That is more polite than, what is the capital of Nigeria? So in this case, it is just like, we're going to use this structure just to sound more polite. It's not like we're um, changing all the structure for the question. So in this case, it's just like uh, to sound. That is uh, the action that we are going to um, perform in that, uh, in that case. So uh, I will add the rule for uh, opinion or hope and rule for wish. And also rule for presumption or expectation for answer chain or the regularity comment or regret because there are some more examples that we need to see about the wool, but in that case, I will add the information um, that we are missing in this moment. Uh, you will find in the document tomorrow. So it's not necessary that you are searching for that information right now, because we are going to have that, um, that information. So um, we are going to uh, stop the session here because it's time to end the session. So we are going to see each other tomorrow and uh, we are going to have the session number three of the week number three. So we are going to, um, let's see. It's not like, it's kind of uh, having troubles with the, the connection. So we're going to end the session here. So. Have a really good night and see you tomorrow. Bye, teacher. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Bye, teacher. Bye.